Welcome to the Specialty Navigation. For years, pilots, seamen and explorers have steered their way around their respective environments, relying on their navigation skills. Scuba divers can also learn to master their marine environment by applying many of these same techniques. When a scuba diver learns to navigate, a new sense of confidence and ability is achieved. Simply knowing you can find your way back to the exit point relieves stress and builds confidence. In this program, we will discuss various ways to navigate underwater, including some fun ways to increase your ability once you finish this course. The most basic method of navigation, natural navigation, is the first technique we will discuss. Most divers are probably practicing natural navigation to some extent, as it simply involves orienting yourself to your surroundings and then using them to indicate direction. Let's take a look at some of the natural underwater surroundings you can use for navigation. Underwater formations, such as crevices, can be used either as a reference point to start our dive from or as a guide to follow. Some examples of natural landmarks that can be used are a landmass or wall, a unique coral head, a distinct rock formation, an outcropping or overhang, or a kelp bed. Man-made landmarks such as wrecks, docks and buoys can also be used to aid in navigation. Natural sources of light can also guide a diver underwater. For example, the position of the sun or moon can help you orient yourself. While at night, artificial light sources are used to mark the descent line, the exit point and other divers. Nighttime can be an exceptional time to dive if you are properly trained and equipped. For more information, ask your SSI dive professional about enrolling in the SSI Night and Limited Visibility Program. At many dive sites, the bottom composition will change as you swim. For example, you may start with a sandy bottom and then swim over coral. This means that you need to return to sand to find your exit point. Bottom slope may indicate whether you are swimming away from shore, and because of wave action, ripples in the sandy bottom will run parallel to the shore. Underwater, divers experience surge, or the back and forth movement of water caused by waves. Surge will usually run parallel to the shore, and become more noticeable as you get closer to land. When you plan your dive, you will need to understand what to expect from the site. If you're new to the site, talk with the dive guide or another diver familiar with the area. The underwater layout should be similar to that of the surface, so features that are visible topside can help you start the orientation process. You may want to take notes or draw a map on a slate for future reference. Remember to ask all questions up front, because it will be too late once you are underwater. Once you and your buddy are in the water, take some time to orient yourself before you start diving. Note your position and the bottom features. Add any landmarks or reference points to your map and record your beginning depth and direction. That way, you will know what depth to return to in order to find your exit point. Lastly, note your starting time. A good tactic is to swim along a landmass for a set amount of time, and then turn around and swim back for the same amount of time. In this instance, you should end up close to the same place. During your dive, have fun and stay alert. 
take the time to notice the subtleties around you. Through good planning and alertness, it should be simple to return to your exit point. It may be as easy as reversing your course and swimming for a certain amount of time. Or you may need to return to a specific depth to find your reference point. Common pitfalls to avoid are deviating from your planned course without making a note or taking shortcuts during pre-dive planning. If you realize that you are lost, stop and look around. You will probably be able to reorient yourself to your surroundings. However, if you are low on air or cannot judge your location, the best choice is to surface. But don't forget to make a safety stop at 5 meters or 15 feet for 3 to 5 minutes. Once you reorient yourself, you can drop back below the surface if you have plenty of air or you can swim back on the surface. As you become more comfortable, you will gain a heightened awareness of your surroundings, allowing you to sharpen your natural navigation skills. The compass is a useful tool that helps the diver maintain an accurate sense of direction. Learning to properly use a compass will also add to your overall self-confidence and comfort. And the ability to navigate using a compass assists you to complete a dive without having to surface for directions. This allows you to relax, conserve energy, and extend your bottom time, which is especially important if you are deep diving or repetitive diving. As your confidence and ability grows, you can begin to explore new locations, adding adventure and increasing your diving enjoyment. Let's take the mystery out of compasses and begin by examining how they work. A compass is actually a simple device with few moving parts. In order for a compass to work, it must have a magnetic needle that points north. It should be able to move freely, even when the compass is tilted. A quality compass will have the degree markings on a bezel that can be rotated. The bezel should also have an index mark that can be lined up with the north arrow. There should be a lubber line that is permanently attached to the face of the compass. When navigating, you always sight down the lubber line. There are various types of compasses available, depending on your intended use. Generally, the more features a compass has, and the more durable it is, the more it will cost. The four general categories of compasses are the top reading, the side reading, the digital and the watch band. They come in a variety of styles from a wristband to a hose mount to one that is built into a console or one that is digitally integrated into a dive computer. The best type of compass is one that can be read from the top and the side. This style gives the diver the most flexibility when navigating. Deviation is a problem that all compass users must be aware of. Deviation is created when a metal object, like a wreck, comes close to or in contact with the compass. That is why a compass may not work properly when diving on a wreck. The compass should be fairly sensitive, so it can quickly pick up any deviation from course. Your SSI Dive Center can help you choose a compass that fits your diving style and needs. Also, consult your SSI Navigation Manual for more information about the types and styles of compasses and how they work. For our purposes, let's start with a simple reciprocal course. 
This is a course that goes from point A to point B, and then back to point A. The first step is to select the reference point you will be diving to. Take a heading. Simply point the compass towards your reference point and wait until the north arrow has settled. Now, all you need to do is line the index markup with the north arrow. If you are boat diving, remember to let the boat swing into its final position before setting your compass. After you're in the water, all you'll need to do is realign the north arrow with the index mark and you will be pointed in the correct direction. If you are using a side reading compass, the degree marks should be lined up. No matter how accurate your compass is, you will not likely reach your destination if you swim with improper body position. The best way to stay in the proper position is to keep your body straight and in line with the lubber line. As you hold the compass, it should be on a level plane, both from front to back and side to side. Your arm position is also important. If you are using a wrist-mounted compass, you can cross one arm over the other, or you may want to take it off your wrist and hold it in your hands. When you hold the compass in your hands, it is easy to just move your arms and swim in the wrong direction. Just as you should keep the compass on an even course, so should you keep your body even. Think of the lubber line as extending straight through your body. If you are pointing in one direction and kicking in another, you will not stay on course. When it's time to turn around, you will need to change your course by 180 degrees. This means you will need to either add or subtract 180 degrees from your original setting. Once you calculate the new setting, turn the bezel to that number. It should be directly opposite your original course. Next, turn your entire body so the north arrow realigns with the index mark. You can now return to your exit point right on course. By learning to combine your skills, you can increase your flexibility. Even if you are planning on using natural navigation, you may want to take a compass heading for your destination, just in case. Because you never know when beautiful clear water may turn into a limited visibility situation. As you become more comfortable with using a compass, it will be easier to maintain proper body position and get an accurate reading. As diving conditions change, so will navigation techniques. Special situations such as limited visibility, night diving, deep diving, and currents will require you to adapt your navigation skills. Navigating in these conditions is more challenging and is a good way for advanced divers to increase their ability. Diving in limited visibility can be an adventurous experience on its own, but attempting to navigate through the turbid water adds an additional challenge to the diver. The difficulty with navigating in limited visibility is that you can never see the whole picture. When deep diving, the last thing a diver should do is get lost or surface for directions. The diver must be able to navigate back to the ascent line without undue delay, because time is of the essence when deep diving. Your original dive plan of depth and bottom time must be adhered to, or you may find yourself in a decompression situation. If decompression stops were not figured into the dive plan, air could run low. Currents cause water to flow towards and away from shore, as well as parallel to the shore, 
and can cause resistance for a diver swimming into and across the current. Currents are a problem for boat divers and beach divers because they cause divers to drift off course, making it difficult to navigate to and from the exit point. To simplify, think of the current as flowing from your left to your right. You would have to swim slightly left of your compass bearing on the way out and slightly right of your compass bearing on the way back. Before diving in specialty situations, it's highly recommended that you enroll in other SSI specialty programs. Navigation is a skill that will be used and perfected throughout your diving career. The more you dive, the more you can practice advanced navigation techniques. As your navigational talent grows, you may want to attempt more difficult courses. Multiple course headings increase your options for diving and challenge even advanced navigators. A triangular course involves three compass headings, just as a triangle has three angles. The easiest course for a diver to calculate is a triangle with three equal turns of 120 degrees. However, any three angles can be used as long as they total 360 degrees. Navigating a square course is easy because you simply make right angle or 90 degree turns. Four turns will equal 360 degrees and get you back to where you started. An example for the use of this would be if you are navigating around an object, such as a large rock mound that is too tall to swim over. Your SSI instructor will teach you more challenging navigation techniques, as well as skills to use in special situations. More than any other specialty, navigation provides a wide variety of activities a diver can do in his or her own backyard. Local diving can be a challenging and rewarding experience. And even though the visibility may be limited, that doesn't mean your fun has to be. More than that, navigation provides a sense of confidence and added safety no matter what body of water you are diving in. Your new navigational skills will provide a whole world of potential, for they will open up new dive sites and possibilities you never would have had the ability to experience before.